lasers in space, and other updates on SpaceX's Starlink constellation. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to give you an update on uh, the race to bring a satellite broadband down to Earth. Now this morning, SpaceX launched another 60 satellites of their Starlink constellation. This is a kind of a regular occurrence, not usually newsworthy. They've been launching uh, two, even three times a month, 60 satellites at a time. But today, during their live launch, cat, launch broadcast, they shared a little bit about the current status of the Starlink beta testing that's going on, and some really interesting, exciting preview of some technology that is to come in the next generation of Starlink, lasers in space. So let's start off with the, the current status of the beta. So Starlink is in beta test right now. It's kind of a private friends and family beta focused on SpaceX and Tesla employees and other people that have been specifically invited. Um, this private beta is ongoing right now and a few little tidbits have been leaking out of it, but this is the first time SpaceX has shared an update. And they basically said the Beta testing is going really, really well. They are having, quote, super fast latencies, and um, the speeds they're seeing are over 100 megabits per second, which is actually faster than some of the leaked speeds that have come out. So what they're officially saying is they're seeing super fast latencies fast enough for the fastest online gaming, and um, download speeds fast enough for multiple people to be streaming HD videos simultaneously within a household. So pretty impressive if they can pull that off. Um, they also shared that you know, the public beta will still be coming out later this year, so we'll be getting a lot more news about what the general public can expect and what the service will look like when that public beta actually does come out later this year, probably commercial service next year. Now, another thing that um, SpaceX shared today was that they have successfully trialed the first Inter inter satellite laser link, what they're calling space lasers, where they're sending data from one SpaceX satellite, one Starlink, to another in space by lasers. Now, normally, well, most satellites work by you communicate to the satellite, and the satellite acts like a mirror and bounces your connection, bounces and sends your information right back down to a ground station. And in the case of all the current Starlink satellites so far, um, that means you have to have a ground station in range of where the satellites have coverage. Not ha having a satellite overhead is not enough. You actually have to have a ground station. Um, and SpaceX has been building a lot of ground stations to cover the United States, but out to sea or in most of the rest of the world, ground stations aren't really an option. So the original architecture for Starlink called for using lasers. So you can go up to the satellite, and bounce, bounce, bounce between satellites, and then come down to a ground station closer to your destination. They left that out of all of the first generation of Starlink satellites because it's really cutting edge, unproven technology and they wanted to focus on getting something up there. But they revealed now that they're starting to experiment with putting lasers in the satellites and they've had their first successful test of a laser link between two satellites moving hundreds of gigabytes of data. So this is probably not going to become widespread until you know, the second generation of Starlink, however long that takes to roll out, the pace that SpaceX goes, who knows, but they're starting to work on the satellite links, which is what opens the door for Starlink to work for cruisers out to sea, you know, crossing oceans. And it also opens the door for really, really fast international um, data transmissions, which mostly matters for uh, financial traders and stuff who are trying to make millisecond speed stock trades across international uh, boundaries and stuff, but um, yeah, if you're a competitive gamer competing at the international level, hey, those lower latencies across, across spanning the plan planet can be really cool too. Now, there's another thing that uh, SpaceX is up to. Part of the reason they're rushing to show off their performance right now. So the FCC has revealed that SpaceX is the only uh, satellite provider that is competing for the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. Now, this is a $16 billion dollar a federal subsidy to bring um, broadband mobile broadband internet to rural areas that have fewer other options or no other options and 500 companies are mostly local providers wired providers and a few wireless providers like actually Verizon and several cable companies are competing for this subsidy so the federal government will pay for bringing service to these markets SpaceX is the only satellite provider that is competing for some of this 16 billion dollar subsidy and to do this, the FCC has basically said, we need you to prove by the end of September that you can deliver 
affordable service that is 25 megabits per second down, 3 megabits per second up, under 100 millisecond latency, and that you can deliver 200 gigabytes per month of data caps. That's, that is the minimum tier to compete. Not you know, Who knows if they'll go higher than that, but SpaceX is saying they're going to be able to meet that, that and they're going to, they've now got a deadline for later this month to prove that they can do this to the FCC so that they're eligible to try and compete for some of this money. Now, when they do this, the, the Rural Development Fund is limited by census tracts. So it's going to be any service that is being federally subsidized will not be mobile friendly. You will not be allowed to take it on the road with you. Uh, so great for mobile, for rural users or, or uh, nomads who might be in a fixed location for a long period of time in one of these designated markets that might get subsidized with this. But you might see Starlink prices come out that are the subsidized prices Mobile users and people who want to use it in other places will have to wait and see what the Starlink prices are that are unsubsidized. So don't get too excited if you see some initial claims of you know, Starlink rolling out at some really great prices. They might have to wait for the rest of the market for the, the prices to be driven down, the economies of scale to kick in, and for them to be able to produce the antennas affordably. But you know, a lot happening on the Starlink front. SpaceX is going full steam ahead to uh, roll this thing out as fast as possible. Um, and we'll, the year ahead will be very, very interesting. Now, a quick update on the rest of the space race. Uh, OneWeb, um, SpaceX's biggest other competitor trying to big a, build a massive next-generation constellation, has, even though they're still working their way through bankruptcy, hoping to rise again by the end of the year, has managed to get FCC approval to expand their constellation to 2,000 satellites. And then we also covered last month that Amazon has now gotten a, a license for their project, uh, Kuiper, to roll that, that out as well. So a lot of satellites are going to be moving up into space over the years ahead. It's going to be a very, very interesting race to watch, and uh, we'll keep you posted on everything, all the developments that we track. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.